So when you look to driver development, obviously it was a, a key part of your career moving on from your time as a driver. I think it was a kind of a really noble decision to to not, you, you spoke about earlier, kind of a um, not liking racing after the accident in the sense that you just felt disconnected from it. You felt pre prevented from competing and, and that there's a kind of anger there at that, um, and a frustration. But when you look then to be training other drivers, helping them find their success, maximizing their opportunities and learning how to compete in championship structures and, and succeed in, in junior formula racing, alongside that perspective that Alex Palou has at maximizing opportunities, what were some of the other lessons that you thought were really essential for young racing drivers? I think, and this stems from being inquisitive and spending time in other sports, there's a real emphasis on the technical and tactical in terms of driver development. But that tends to boil down to instruction. So what people do, coaches or engineers, is they'll look at the data and they will then, with a tech and tack lens on that, instruct the driver to be a certain way or do things in a mechanical motion. So brake there, pick up the throttle there, steer there, all of those kinds of things. And there's not much of an emphasis on coaching, on personal development. So the human underpins the performer. So when we see teams or individual athletes be the best that they can be on the greatest days of their career, that comes with a huge amount of understanding of self and a huge amount of personal de development and understanding of the, of the human psyche and, and, and what goes into top performance. And we don't do that very well in, in our sport. And that's why you see some athletes really flourish in the moment and you'll see some athletes or teams capitulate in the moment. Penalties. For, an, for example, in football, it's a prime example, Absolutely. really pressurised yeah. environment, and you see some people flourish and some people, uh, they, they, they really struggle with, with the moment. And we don't look too much uh, around why drivers are the way that they are. And that, for me, sort of coincided with a real movement at the MSA, Motorsport UK, as it's known now, from Robert Reed and, and Ben Taylor and, and, and various others, Alexander Wurtz at the FIA to, to sort of try and create a coaching structure whereby we replicated what you see in other sports. So we need to develop coaches. At the moment, we have people that are working with young drivers that might be great, they might not, but there's no quality control in that spectrum. So if you look at football, for example, you'll have coaching badges all the way up from level two to level six. There's a great deal of responsibility when it comes to informing and developing others. So we're still banging that drum, but there, there's lots of work to be done. So when I went to Carlin all those years ago, it was to not necessarily look at the tech and tack, but it was to actually work with drivers to to better understand how they can be the best that they can be. So when we go into a qualifying session, for example, it's not like, right, my brake shape needs to be X, Y and Z. It's it's peeling that back, going further up the the river, if you like. How did you sleep? What did you have for breakfast? How do you focus on process? Because if you can focus on process, the outcome takes care of itself. Whereas what happens is a lot of athletes will start to fear failure. They'll start to tighten up as the week progresses, as the weekend gets underway. They'll start, it's the what if. What if that happens? What if this happens? You know, all the pressure and expectation on your shoulders. You're solely focused on outcome. And actually what happens when you solely focus on outcome, there's an almost emotional release and tightness that prevents you from focusing on the process. The process, the very things that will actually deliver the outcome, you almost forget about. And that's a dangerous space to be in. And so I try and do a little bit of work uh, in that area and around that. But to be honest with you, and, and again, you know, I'm inquisitive. I spend time in other sports. We're, we're actually decades behind in motorsport. There, there's so much work to be done, but the appetite just isn't there at the moment. And one of the main reasons being is 
in the junior formula, it's not the teams that control the environment. It's actually the parents or, or the sponsor or the investor. So, you know, the parents will come to you and say, right, well, Jensen Button did 20 days in an F3 car at Pembury. I want to do 20 days in an F3 car at Pembury. And you'd be like, well, what's what's the outcome there? Why why do you want to do that? Well, because Jensen Button did that. And, you know, he's a world champion. It's like, well, actually, looking at your son or daughter, we think that there is more time to be invested in developing this, 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 and this. But, but that tends to fall on deaf ears because... The, the parents or the investor will be like, listen, if you're not going to deliver what I want, I'll just take my money elsewhere and we'll go to another team who will. And that's the sort of conundrum that you're you're up against. So it becomes really frustrating when when you're trying to to implement this type of work within that area.